Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, the webinar today is focused on Action for Healthy Kids' Game On program. The webinar is called Get Your Game On, Six Steps to Building a Healthy School. Hopefully, you're in the right place. And we're really excited to kind of talk through Action for Healthy Kids' Game On program today and, of course, answer your questions as we go along. There are two of us presenting to you today. My name is Heidi Melby. I'm the Senior Manager of School Health Programs of Action for Healthy Kids. I um, manage our Game On program, so I'm uh, very closely familiar with Game On and all it has to offer. And I'm also joined by Hannah Ramsland, who's Action for Healthy Kids' Indiana State Coordinator, who has also worked very closely on Game On uh, and developed some of its content as well. So a couple of logistics before we get started. Once you're linked in, you should see that control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, you can either use your telephone or your computer to listen to the presentation, but everyone is muted to avoid that background interference. So if you do have questions, please use the question box that's on the control panel, and we'll try and get them answered as we're going along. Hannah's gonna be monitoring those, and of course, we'll pause a couple of times to answer those questions as well. The webinar is being recorded. We'll send a link to the recording and handouts by this Friday, so you'll have um, all of the resources that we reference. You'll also have a copy of the slide deck and, of course, the recording. So let's get started. Um, first, I just wanna quickly overview the agenda. So the main goal of today is to make sure that you're familiar with Action for Healthy Kids' Game On program. We really want you to be able to walk away feeling comfortable walking through, uh, taking your school through each of the steps of Game On. So we'll first start off, I want to just give you a little bit of background for Action for Healthy Kids for folks that are new to us on the call, and then we'll talk through each of the six steps. We'll talk a little bit about what the online Game On program has to offer, and then we'll also highlight some of the tips and tricks uh, for success within each of those areas. So let's go ahead and dive in. So first, a little bit about Action for Healthy Kids. So here's our vision. It's, it's a world in which every kid is healthy, active, and ready to learn. So as an organization, we mobilize school professionals, families, communities to really take actions that lead to healthy eating, physical activity, and healthier schools where kids are really thriving. Our network is made up of all sorts of people. We've got moms and dads, teachers, students, school community leaders, school wellness experts, you name it, uh, these are all folks that have banded together to focus on creating healthier learning environments for kids. And ultimately, we believe that everyone does have a play to end the nation's childhood obesity epidemic. And we've created programs, tools, and resources to help make that possible. So we're very excited to be celebrating our 15th anniversary this year. We were founded in 2002 by Surgeon General David Thatcher. And today we have more than 130,000 members and constituents in our network. So lots of people doing lots of great work all over the country. We also partner with dozens of professional associations, government agencies, and corporations at the national, state, and local level. So now that you know a little bit about us, I'd love to just kind of get to know some of the folks on the call. So we have a poll here for you. The question is, what is your role at your school? Are you a teacher? Are you a principal or other administrator? Are you a district staff member? Perhaps you're a parent or community member? or other. Unfortunately, we can only have five options here, so other is kind of a catch-all, but would love your participation. We'll keep the poll open for another 10 seconds or so, if you wouldn't mind answering your response. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and close it out. Great, so we can see that we've got a really even split. Looks like about a third of you are district staff members. That's great, a third are parents community members, and then about a quarter are teachers. And then we've got some others on the call as well. Awesome, great. Well, thanks to, um, great to get to know you a little bit. It's a little bit tough with webinar technology, but I'm glad that you guys are all here, especially for those of you who are district staff members. Just wanted to call out, um, the Game On program has been used at a district level. Chicago Public Schools is one of the districts that has used it in a cohort of about 20 schools as a framework for schools to implement district wellness policies. So. Uh, keep that in mind as we talk about Game On today, that might be especially useful from a district perspective. Okay, so I, I'm sure many of you know this, uh, but I, I feel that we always have to kind of ground ourselves in the work that we do and why we're doing it. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that why. Um, if you take a look around a kindergarten classroom, unless we take action today, we know that about half of those kids will be obese adults. And of course, all of the countless uh, uh, additional complications that arise from obesity, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, et cetera. So from a health perspective, 
improving health opportunities at schools is really important work, especially for those of us who work in health. For those of us who work in schools, we, we love healthy kids, but we also know that healthy kids learn better, right? So if not for improving the health of kids, schools should be addressing physical activity and good nutri nutrition to improve academics. Just a couple of pieces of research here. We know that undernourished children tend to have low energy. They're often irritable. They have difficulty concentrating. They, always, they also score lower on vocabulary, reading comprehension, and arithmetic tests. Uh, feel free to borrow all of these uh, talking points as you're communicating to your own school communities about the importance of eating better at school. Uh, we also know that physical activity turns on the brain. So I love showing these scans. Some of you may have seen these before. Um, we know that an active, students who are active, their brain is activated, right? So if you look at the image on your right that has 20 minutes of walking, so students who are walking just moderately, 20 minutes, and then they took a test. This is a composite score of all 20 kids that were taking this test. So you can see that their brain is lit up, it's ready to learn versus the students that did not walk before the test uh, and also and sat quietly instead and then took the test. And that's the image you see on your left-hand side. So very clear evidence that physical activity really turns on the brain and makes uh, students more prepared to learn in that way. We also know that children score a full grade level higher in reading comprehension after physical activity than after a period of rest. So Similarly, like those other scans you see, this is another research article that, again, shows that moving more really, really does contribute academically to success. So let's uh, move on to Game On now that we've kind of grounded ourselves in who we are and, and why our work is so important. So what is Game On? So Game On is a program that was developed about 10 years ago and is really designed to support everyone from staff, to students, to families in improving physical activity and nutrition at their school and at home. Game On was recently revised so that it's a framework that takes schools from starting a school health program all the way to getting nationally recognized for their efforts. So based on our work with other schools that have used the Game On program, we found that schools can go from starting that brand new school health team to getting nationally recognized as a health promoting school in about three years or less. Obviously it depends from school to school and how long it takes. Uh, but and it really doesn't matter where your school is with school wellness initiatives, whether you're just starting your team or even implementing wellness initiatives for year, years, Game On is really intended to kind of provide you with resources, serve as your one-stop shop for school wellness, ideas, tips, resources. It can also complement other programs that your school might already have in place. So Game On is really designed to be flexible to kind of meet your needs no matter where you are, no matter what resources you're currently using. I'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like here later on the webinar. So as you can see, Game On can be found by going to the website there at the bottom. I'm gonna show you that just so you can feel a little bit more comfortable navigating to Game On when you use it yourself. But as you can see, so Game On is it's a framework, really uh, more, more so than a program. So it's a six step framework. Today we're gonna to talk about each of these steps. And the framework is intended to be a, a cycle that schools complete each year. So for example, at the beginning of each year, schools should focus efforts on step one, gathering a school health team whether that means starting a new team, expanding membership from the previous year, whatever that looks like for your school, starting at step one is something schools should be doing every August, September, October. When schools get to step four, find activities, that's where a lot of the content and the resources within Game On is housed. So the program currently has about 80 fun and easy to implement activity ideas that focus on either eating better or moving more. So these activities are organized by room within the school building. So you can see there's that blueprint on your screen. So for example, if you're a teacher that's looking for ideas to move more with your students, you could click on the classroom in the school blueprint and you'll be directed to game on activities that focus on improving nutrition and physical activity in the classroom. Then you can explore from there. So some schools use game on as their go-to framework. Each year they start at step one, they work their way through the steps during the school year, and then the following school year they start over at step one. Other schools use it as a program to complement the existing programs in their school. So they just come to Game On if they're looking for more ideas or resources to support particular activities. So they'll just come to Game On, they'll go immediately to step four, and they'll click on additional activities that they might be doing that year where they could use some more support. Action for Healthy Kids offers three to four online trainings each month as well to complement some of the activities in Game On to give you some additional support on some of the most popular topics. So again, be thinking about how you could use Game On in your own school or district, whether it's as a formal framework 
six step, going through each of the six steps, or simply coming to Game On as an additional resource to support your work. So I'm going to take you through the steps of Game On. I've kind of outlined these uh, the steps bullet by bullet, so you have this as a reference later on. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the Game On program. So if you navigate to actionforhealthykids.org backslash Game On, you'll see it's right here. It's pretty simple. Uh, you can navigate to each of the six steps on your right-hand side here. Uh, so if you want more information about how to gather your team, you can click on step one. If you want to go straight to the activities, you can click on step four. You can also navigate to step four by just scrolling down and clicking directly on the blueprint. So that example I gave to you before, say I'm a classroom teacher, I can hover over classroom. If I click on it, it has a whole host of ideas that focus on eating better and then ideas that focus on moving more. So if I wanted to, for example, host a taste test in my classroom, I can scroll down to host a taste test. If I click on host a taste test, it's going to give me a little bit of information about the activity, give me some tips for taking action, as well as a few resources linked out here, some tips, and then um, information about engaging volunteers as well, and then lots of additional resources that have been vetted by Action for Healthy Kids staff to make sure that they're evidence-based and, um, and great, useful resources for you. So that's just a little snapshot of, of how to navigate to Game On. One other thing I just quickly wanted to show you here is Game On also has an activity of the month. So if I click back on the Game On logo, it will take me back to the home page. This Game On activity of the month changes on the first of every month. And it focuses on a topic that's relevant for that particular month. So in September, we focused on Celebrate Walk to School Day. Uh, that's in early October, so we promoted it in uh, September, and you can see it, it just gives some ideas for ways that schools can celebrate Walk to School Day. So this is a great thing to kind of come back to each month as you're looking for fresh uh, and innovative ideas for your school wellness program. So as I mentioned, these next a couple of slides just reiterate how to access Game On, uh, or just this slide, I suppose, uh, so you can uh, have that for your own record later on. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive just quickly into each of the steps. I'm going to pass it over to my colleague Hannah to start talking a little bit about step one, gather your team. Hannah? Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. And I just want to say I recognize a couple names on the webinar, and I just want to send a special shout out to those from Indiana. I look forward to meeting you all soon, uh, if I haven't already. So we're going to go ahead and get started with step one, gathering your team. Um, and for those of you who have active school health teams, you know the importance of working together to get things done. Parents, teachers, students, school leaders, and community members can really make a lasting impact when you are combining efforts of everyone. The key to providing children with consistent messages around health, nutrition, and physical activity is working together and having a plan. Our uh, Action for Healthy Kids founding chair, Dr. David Satcher, said there is no limit to what we can achieve when we combine the right people. So it's very important to consider as you grow um, your, your school health team. So what is a school health team? So in very general terms, school health teams exist to make schools healthier. Uh, their work may include uh, working on various health concerns within the school, developing that vision and goals, um, and even raising uh, funds to support those programs. At a district level, teams work, are working on larger scale projects that may have an impact across various and many of those schools. And then more at the school level, uh, teams work on the projects that just have those, that impact on that particular school. Parents, teachers, administrators, school staff, youth, board members, and other community members can be a part of a school health team. So I uh, kind of encourage you guys to think outside the box too, even outside of those uh, kind of regular people that you might think should be on a school health team and invite them to be a part. Um, but as a best practice, we've seen that school health teams should at least meet quarterly during the school health year to really make kind of a lasting impact. So before we move on to talk more, a little bit more about gathering your health team, we're just going to pause a little bit and do another poll. So we're going to find out how often you guys um, our meeting as a school health team. So right now the poll is up. What does your school health team look like? So do you not have a team? Um, do you have one on paper, but you don't really meet that often? Um, you have a team you meet about one or three times a year, or do you meet four or more times a year? So go ahead and answer those po that poll question for us. I'll give you a few more seconds. Hi, 
Heidi, can you tell me what those uh, results are? Absolutely, yep. So it looks like 36% uh, don't have a team, 9% have a team on paper but don't really meet, 18% have a team that meets one to three times, and then 36% has a team that meets four or more. So it looks like most of you either don't have a team at all or you have a team that meets four or more times per year. Great. Good mix of folks. Yeah, good. So last year at Action for Healthy Kids, uh, we worked with hundreds of schools uh, to implement Game On. And by the end of the school year, our schools that were funded, about 43% of those schools met at least four times a year. So I mentioned it earlier, but we really find that um, schools that are successful in making kind of that um, lasting impact with school wellness initiatives within their school or district really meet four or more times a year. So just something to strive for um, as you kind of go, regardless of where you are, that's just a strategy that we find that's been helpful um, to help you in your school wellness initiative. So about 85% of our schools had an administrator on their school health team, which is fantastic. Um, we hope that if you don't have a school administrator, you would consider uh, getting one on your team that that'll really make a lasting impact and can help with a lot of the policy implementation as well. So we hope that that will be sharing that success will be something that impacts you and can can help make a difference within your your school health team. So uh, within. Uh, step one of Game On, you'll find strategies uh, to help you build that that strong health team. And it, there there are various tips that uh, for recruitment, how to host effective meetings, developing that vision, um, and we'll walk through that in the next couple of slides. But I just want to um, just highlight a resource that's within step one is the Action for Healthy Kids uh, Wellness Policy Tool. And this is intended to help anyone that's involved in developing, revising, implementing, or evaluating their wellness policies. Um, it gives you the how-to information to put it all together and put it in a process that's uh, kind of easy for you, not only just uh, from putting it on paper, but actually living it out in your day-to-day -day within your school or your district. So um, it's a seven-step tool that includes information uh, that the USDA released as part of the Hunger, Healthy Hunger-Free Kids Act. Um, so you'll have all the most up-to-date information, and I encourage you to check that out when you, you've got the time, if that's something that your wellness policy needs updated with. Um, and also, just a quick shout-out, I think we're going to mention it at the end of the webinar, but if you do have questions along the way about updating your wellness policy or anything along the way, you can always reach out to your state coordinator, and I think Heidi's going to highlight that at the end of the, the webinar on how to find who your state coordinator is. So the next few slides are going to feature that gathering your health team to help you get started. Um, so it sounds like some of you have been active while uh, some of you kind of need to get started. So we're just going to start by developing an elevator pitch. So why do you want to start a wellness team? Or why are you asking people to join? So if you're just getting started, you want to identify this, those champions to help you lead the team. So typically, PE teachers, school nurses, um, and passionate parents are a quick go-to that are already there that are um, usually that passionate person that will help you kind of help uh, get started with the health-related activities. Um, they just, well, the more people you involve um, will really kind of help you get that momentum going. And you definitely don't want to forget about getting your administrator or principal's approval and buy-in. Um, that will really secure that commitment um, to your team and to help kind of move your projects along. And at a minimum, we would hope that your principal would need to be aware and give his or her approval of what you're doing. So if you can get um, public support, too, and community support, that's, that's another great way to make your health team stronger. Um, and the most ideal situation is if um, your principal becomes an active participant on that wellness team. Like we said, 85% of our schools last year had that administrator on their school wellness team. So um, really helps improve that team as you move forward if you can have that administrator on board. So as you're gathering teammates and starting to develop that elevator pitch and that passion that kind of drives people to your committee and your team, uh, you want to start inviting others, right? Those teachers and the staff, parents, other even community members to help join the team. If you can speak at uh, parent-teacher association meetings, um, and then maybe even talk to your principal about who might be good potential members. Um, and using your regular school uh, communication channels, whether that be on the website or newsletters or uh, just a poster up maybe in the cafeteria or in the admin meeting space or something like that. Um, 
some people could be uh, shy about getting involved due to cultural differences or other reasons. So, um, you know, give give these people the platform to be involved and and a way to be involved by by having them part of your your school health team and ask them to do something personally, and then they may help influence others. So. That'll really build that accountability for your team if you're you're seeking out those those key influencers. Um, we suggest that you invite students um, to either sit on your team or provide input and participation. Um, be clear about their roles and expectations. You don't want them to just come to your meetings and just have to sit there and listen and not participate. Um, but just in, uh, consider having them involved, whether that be through a focus group or asking someone from a particular group to be involved. Um, also, if you aren't already participating at a district level, make sure you're connecting with your district. Um, you may have you know, folks from a food service perfect, uh, perspective that may be able to sit on your district that may be doing things in other schools that you want um, to include as resources and be uh, good team members to have as well. So we're going to move on after, since we've kind of gathered our team together. We're going to talk about having and holding successful meetings. So we've all probably been to those meetings that um, we tend to think uh, may be a waste of our time. So these are just a few tips to kind of help avoid uh, people not wanting to be involved or not wanting to attend. So plan regular meetings at convenient times. You know, consider uh, doing a poll uh, so that everyone has their opinion and can share when a good time of the week or a good time of the month or even a good time of day is so that everyone can attend. Um, if possible, consider offering childcare or even healthy snacks or meals to help draw people in. Make sure you're creating a welcoming environment at every meeting. I mean, I know that sounds silly to say, but the little things like greeting people and smiling and just making eye contact really can go a long way. Um, also, have name tags um, in case you are working at a district level so that people um, make sure they know everybody's name and can, and can call them by name. Offer opportunities for conversation and interaction. If you uh, have people feel and more invested, they'll feel like they've developed relationships with others and really feel a part of that team. Make sure that you have a focused agenda. If you can, send it out in advance and really follow and stay true to that agenda. Have a start and end time for your meeting um, to be cautious of people's times because we know, especially those of you who work in a school, uh, your time is precious. Um, note key decisions that are made during the meeting. Make sure you summarize those in next steps. Say it, say it out loud and verbalize it so that everyone knows their next steps. Call them by name. Okay, Heidi, you're going to contact the superintendent and make sure they're on board with walk to school week or whatever that may be just so that everyone has a clear expectation of what's and how to move things forward and keep your activities moving try to accomplish as much as you can um, via email and phone calls outside of those meetings um, just so that you can kind of keep things rolling but do ultimately what is best for you know your school and your or your district and your community um, and then if you're doing larger initiatives like a walk to school day or an Every Kid Healthy Week event, consider uh, forming subcommittees so that you can have kind of specialized folks working on those various projects if needed. So it doesn't take up time during your regular meeting. All right, so I hope you've gathered a few tips to get you started. Those of you who haven't uh, started your school health team again, um, visit the website and, and check out more ways that you can gather that team and get started. Awesome, thanks Hannah. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to step two and three. We're gonna talk about these together since they are uh, so closely related. So step two focuses on assessing and tracking progress. So within Game On, we have an assessment tool that we recommend that schools use. And then step three focuses on creating an action plan based on the results of that assessment. So of course, grounding ourselves in the why. We all know we, we have uh, hardly any extra free time and sometimes it feels a little time intensive and time consuming to do an assessment and take the time to do that. But um, we know that it's important to kind of avoid that temptation to jump right in and start a project and really kind of ground yourself and where your school could improve and what you're already doing well. So um, a couple of, of additional reasons, in addition to just kind of understanding where your school is, um, one is assessments help individuals develop key relationships with staff. Uh, so hopefully you've already been doing this, but the assessment provides yet another reason to communicate and work together. 
So it's a reason to contact the president of your parent association. It's a reason to have a conversation with their principal. Start to build uh, support uh, for school wellness initiatives while you're also gathering data. Um, of course, it helps you determine your school strengths and weaknesses. I think that's probably the obvious one. Um, it can help you really define goals that meet your school's needs. So, so often we say, oh, we want to host a health fair. We want to plan a school garden. Is that really what your school needs at this moment in time? Doing an assessment will help you figure that out. It'll also justify your decision to make changes. So if you find that, in fact, if you want to revamp your breakfast program, uh, doing an assessment will help you prove to not only your team, but others who may not be as closely involved that that's really the direction your school needs to go. And then finally, it helps you document starting points in order to show progress over time. So this not only helps you secure funding if you're able to say, hey, we started here, we did X, Y, Z, and we ended here, um, but it also can kind of just show everyone in your school that your committee is being effective, your team is making progress, and the work that you're doing is valuable. Action for the Kids recommends that you conduct your wellness assessment annually to measure your progress over time. Um, oftentimes we hear about doing a pre and a post test, so one at the beginning and one at the end. If you're able to do that, that's great, but we know that uh, that doesn't always work with given our school schedule. So if you can do it at least once per year, that can help you measure progress from one year to the next year. So as I mentioned, Action for Healthy Kids, uh, within the Game On program, there is an assessment tool that we recommend. Uh, is the School Health Index. So we have a School Health Index tool that we've built within Game On that we recommend as kind of your best practice tool for doing an assessment around school health. We adopted the School Health Index a couple of years ago uh, from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The Alliance for Healthier Generation has also adopted this tool. And the version that we have adopted addresses um, nutrition and physical activity, as well as any questions that cross-cut through all of the modules within the School Health Index. As you can see on your screen there, in the current version, there's eight modules of the School Health Index. CDC is currently updating the School Health Index to reflect uh, the whole school, whole child, whole community model for folks that are familiar with that. Um, but currently, there are the eight modules. As I mentioned, Action for Healthy Kids has adopted uh, the physical activity and nutrition questions within each of these modules. So if you complete the School Health Index tool on, uh, within Game On on our website, you'll notice that there are eight modules currently, but we don't ask any questions about uh, tobacco or sexual health or some of those other health-related questions that are not specifically related to physical activity and nutrition. So I wanna, again, just kind of pause for a poll, get a sense of who's familiar with the School Health Index, who's ever completed the School Health Index. So the question here is, has your school ever completed the School Health Index, whether it's through Action for All the Kids, through the Alliance for Healthier Generations, through the CDC or otherwise? So uh, either yes, we completed it this year, yes, but we haven't completed it this year, no, we've never completed it, and I'm not sure. So I'll give you all just a few seconds to enter your responses here. Okay, go ahead and close that out. Thanks for your participation. All right, it looks like most of you aren't sure. 55%, about a quarter said, yeah, we've completed it before, but not this year. And then about 9% said, we've completed it this year. And another 9% said, no, we've never completed it. So again, quite a, a diverse group. I know sometimes it's hard to tell if you've done it uh, because it is oftentimes completed by one person or a small group of folks. But I encourage you as kind of the next step, figure out if your school has done an assessment if the School Health Index is the right assessment for you, given what you want to accomplish this year. Um, and if so, uh, reach out to us or your uh, state coordinator, as Hannah mentioned, and we're happy to kind of help you get started with it. So again, a little, just a little bit of background during the 16-17 school year. So the School Health Index has a number of questions. Um, the average score was 76%. So what that means is schools on average were fully implementing 76% of the best practices on the tool. Not so bad, right? Um, we found that most schools were implementing recess. So if they were elementary, three quarters were fully implementing recess. Um, again, a similar percentage, 73% were meeting the Smart Snacks federal standards. So anything that was being sold outside of the school meal program was meeting those nutrition standards. So that's great. And then 72% uh, were communicating with families about health and wellness initiatives. So those are kind of the top three best practices that came out of that assessment. A couple of things that schools weren't doing, 23% were not doing farm to school activities. So they weren't uh, procuring local food for their school meal program. They weren't doing a school garden. 
Um, similar percentage, we're not implementing individual physical activity and fitness plans for students. So if your school is doing a fitness testing, for example, uh, that is an individual uh, physical activity and fitness plan for students. Um, and then about 29, 30% were promoting walking and biking to school. So again, relatively low percentage compared to those others I pointed out before. Um, so this just kind of gives you a snapshot of what a sample of about a thousand schools nationwide currently are doing. Um, as I mentioned, I kind of encourage you all to do the assessment yourself, see where your school matches up. Um, within Game On, uh, we have some tips for kind of like why it's helpful to complete an assessment, especially if you're trying to convince others that you want to do it. We include the link to actually complete the School Health Index on our portal, and we include a bunch of documents there that give you a step-by-step -step guide for how to complete it. There's a list of questions you can easily print. So if you want to complete the assessment on paper first with your school health team, that's helpful. And then some additional guidance. If you're not really sure what a question is asking, it explains it more thoroughly and what, uh, what it means if you are fully implementing that best practice or if you're not. So some great tools there. I want to just quickly show you uh, what it looks like when you complete the School Health Index on Action for Healthy Kids' portal. So after you complete it, you receive a report and links to online resources based on your answers. So here's an example report. This is for the first module. So the module focuses on school health and safety policies in the environment. So you can see at the top that the report will show you a graph that summarizes how you responded to each question on the module. So you can really clearly see where did you respond higher, a score of three, versus where did you respond lower, a score of zero. Each question, um, as I mentioned, is on the same scale of zero to three. And then you can see at the bottom of the report, we'll highlight a few questions. I know it's kind of tough to see, but essentially we give you the graph so you can see it. And then at the bottom of the report, we provide a couple of resources and areas where we suggest focusing on where you scored either a zero or a one. So it's a nice summary. Uh, we give a report for each of the modules that you complete. We also give you a, an overall report that also has a graph like the one you see on your screen here. So you can see um, on your overall report, you can compare your score, what's the blue, with the maximum score. So you can kind of see you know, where, where you're achieving the maximum score, like with this example in module two and where you have a little bit of room to grow. You can also compare it to your state. So any other school within your state that has completed the School Health Index, you can see where you match up. You can also compare it to every other school in your district. So uh, this is also kind of a nice feature to see, you know, how are you doing compared to the school down the street on your School Health Index assessment. So lots of nice features here too. Similarly to the module reports, we'll outline exactly where you can improve exactly what your strengths are and provide some resources as well. So these reports are kind of nice if you're sharing information with your principal or other groups in your school. If you're ever presenting at a board meeting, uh, these are nice kind of reports that summarize how your school is doing compared to, to other folks in your district and in your state. I mentioned we were going to talk about the School Health Index Step 2 and Step 3 action plans together. Uh, so when you complete the School Health Index on Action for Healthy Kids' portal, you get an online action plan. It's automatically generated. Um, so a few minutes ago, um, we kind of talked through the report. Right next to the link to the report, you'll see there's a link to an action plan. Uh, so specific action items that are based on your School Health Index responses will pre-populate onto your action plan. So under this Pending Actions button here, uh, you'll see it, it'll be a number. So if we recommend you focus on five actions based on your School Health Index results, you'll see a number five here. If you click on Add Pending Actions, you can choose which ones you want to collect to your action plan. You can also add customized actions. So if you, like this example, are hosting an annual health fair, you can go ahead and click Add a Custom Action, and you can add your own action that maybe isn't directly related to the School Health Index, but you want to make sure it's on your radar. Um, and then you can add various information your start and end date, who's responsible for it. Um, there's some other details if you click on the edit button here, you can add to add some more uh, information about that particular action item. You can check off items once they're done. You can see which ones you've completed. So again, it's a really nice kind of one-stop shop place where you can put all the things you're doing around school wellness. You can make sure you're focusing on things that the School Health Index recommends that you improve. And you can kind of check things off as you go to, to track your progress over time throughout the year. So a really nice tool that I encourage you all to use if you don't already have an action planning tool at your disposal. Uh, just to kind of go back to the why for the action plan, a lot of the similar reasons for why we do an assessment. 
it's a great opportunity for team building, for group brainstorming, uh, especially if you kind of have an opportunity where folks can throw out a bunch of ideas, brainstorm, and then you hone in on, on actions and prioritize from there. It also ensures clear communication. So by listing it in your action plan, it's clear that that's a focus of yours, um, that's something you can communicate to your administrators, to parents, so that everyone's really on the same page with what the school health team is looking to accomplish that year. And it also helps you with your timeline. So I always recommend that schools use their action plan in every school health team meeting that they're referring to it, they're checking off actions, they're adding additional actions, they're kind of making sure that they're tracking on what's coming up to make sure that nothing falls to the wayside as we uh, get into our busy lives. Within step three of Game On, there's uh, lots of resources to help you with your action plan planning. So talking a little bit about why to create an action plan. So again, you can kind of encourage others to get on board with creating one. It provides some steps on how you can customize your online action plan, what you should consider including. And then it also has just some additional resources to help you plan your initiatives. So there's a, a list of national health observances. So you might want to consider, for example, planning an event around um, National Farm to School Month, which is in October. Uh, so again, other resources to kind of help you as you create a plan and a timeline for the school year. Alrighty, so we've so far we've covered steps one, two, and three. It looks like we're doing okay on time, so we'll continue to kind of move forward with steps four, five, and six. Um, Hannah, you want to take over step four? Yeah, thanks, Heidi. And just a real quick reminder, if you guys have any questions along the way, please feel free to chat those in your uh, chat box. And if um, Heidi and I can't get to them today, we'll definitely follow up with you afterwards. So I encourage you to ask questions if you have any. So step four, find activities we are going to get a chance to take a deeper dive into this blueprint that Heidi mentioned earlier. Um, and obviously it may not, not look exactly like your school building, but you get the idea um, that you have a lot of resources based on where you are within your school. So um, each of these school um, locations have a um, eat better and move more activities associated with them. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that, of why we should host more eat better and move more activities, excuse me. Um, so a healthy school food culture supports classroom lessons. So food policies and practices reflect curriculum standards for health and nutrition rather than conflict with them. Plus, we know that being active throughout the day helps students focus um, during lessons. That healthy food culture and regular physical activity encourages consumption of the nutrient-rich foods and contributes to overall good health. We know students are less likely to suffer from conditions such as obesity, diabetes, hypertension, and cavities. In providing these opportunities to eat better and move more publicly demonstrate your school's commitment to promoting healthy behaviors among its students, uh, the families, and staff, sending um, the message that really health is your top priority and that health drives that student success. Um, the culture of eating better and moving more creates the excitement around nutrition and physical activity. And when nutritious foods are present and fun and engaging ways, students are more eager to get involved. And the same goes with physical activity. So most of the Game On activities have content structured in the following ways. They have an overview. They have a section where uh, at, tells them to take action, tips, engaging volunteers, and additional resources. The overview section just basically describes the activity, what it is, why it's important, provides a little background information uh, needed to help you kind of understand what that activity is all about. The take action section provides easy ways to implement the activity or the steps necessary to kind of get the program started. For example, if you're looking at a nutrition education activity, it gives you various tips uh, of ways that you can implement uh, that education message around nutrition around your school building. The tips section provides various things that just kind of help make your, that will help make your activity a success. Um, and obviously engaging volunteers is going to help you reinforce um, how to kind of implement those activities when using volunteers. They, um, volunteers we know bring that energy and capacity and new ideas to those programs. And so each of our Game On activities um, suggest how you can make that, that happen through volunteerism. And finally, the additional resources section is where you can link out to various evidence-based resources that can really help you support activity and give you some more ideas and tip sheets, um, maybe that will help you um, 
meet your school's needs. For example, um, there's some fitness tracking logs that we've um, connected to or uh, example parent letters that might be um, a great resource that will really help you implement those activities. So this next slide highlights um, a few of those activities. We've actually, I noticed that when I, I was going through these slides, there were a few that were missing um, that are newer to us that we didn't get a chance to add, but these are the eat better activities. So I think Heidi mentioned the taste test one. There's one on offering healthy snacks. A school garden one is pretty, partic uh, pretty popular. Um, smart snack standards, making sure that your food is appropriate with those USDA standards. Nutrition education and breakfast in the classroom. And then some of our Move More activities um, include active indoor recess, um, songs and stories with movement, having an open gym or recess at home, recess before lunch. And then one that's not on here that I know is fairly new is the family fitness night. So there's really a lot of great things for you to go check out. And I encourage you um, when you have some time to, to go there and just check out some ways that maybe um, you can kind of up your your games in the school and challenges within your school. So next we kind of move into uh, the step five. Um, and this is engaging families and community members in your school. So these are really strategies and ideas that help you enhance that program um, and involving those that are in, in the community. So regardless of actual tasks that they do, your volunteers have at least one thing in common, and that is the time and the energy and resources that they can really bring to the table to help you meet those goals. Um, they have so much value, volunteers do, and some advantages of engaging these volunteers is having a specialized knowledge or skills that can be useful to complement or enhance your efforts. Uh, volunteers provide a new and different perspective, again, bringing that kind of fresh energy to your, to your group and your team. They can, volunteers can provide a lasting impact and contribution. And I think the more people that get involved, the easier it becomes to gain that additional support for your work. Uh, finally, volunteers help save, save your school money um, and do a lot of that work for you when uh, maybe those of you within the school building can't get it done just based on your schedule. Because of the amount of help that's potentially available for volunteers, an important question to ask is, how can we best tap this resource? So in order to engage those volunteers successfully, you have to have kind of that mutual partnership between you and them. And you'll have to do a little bit of initial planning um, that can really pay dividends in the long run when you're recruiting and involving your volunteers. So think about who you are targeting, um, whether it's parents or high school students or just community members. Each group is going to have a different motivator to um, want to participate in becoming involved. So you may have to change that up as you reach out to them on, on the why they should get involved or the how. Um, secondly, when you're engaging these volunteers, you've really got to be good at communicating. So create that welcoming environment to them. Let them know exactly what's expected during that time of commitment, the role that they're going to play. Um, also, as they're working, really take time to connect with them if, if you can. Um, really make that um, uh, initiative to paint the bigger picture of your school health and your kind of your school health team's plan for wellness in your schools. Um, connect the dots on why their volunteer task specifically is important. Um, don't assume that they, they know. You know, make it obvious so that they can really kind of put it together in their heads and want to continue to volunteer. And finally, and again, um, this comes without saying, it's definitely probably the most important, but make sure that that volunteer is valued. Um, if you can provide small incentives or offering healthy refreshments, really go a long way and really make sure that you're able to say thank you as much as you can. So it's just important to keep all these factors in mind when you're looking to involve and strengthening your, your volunteer engagement. So along with that same engagement, we know that parents and families play a really important part and we want to maximize uh, that family engagement. So you really should offer a variety of commitment opportunities um, to those, those family members. Parents, grandparents, siblings, and even caregivers can really support your school health team in, in many ways. Let parents know what's expected of them. Let them know exactly what their time is going to entail in those activities. Um, if they're able to do it during the school day, like leading lunchtime walks or weekend games, the more specific you can be, I think will really um, kind of enhance that that volunteer time. And again, offering those simple incentives can really help um, help them kind of remove 
barriers and help them and help motivate them, um, like providing childcare, transportation passes, again those healthy refreshments. Um, you could consider, you know, paying for their ticket to an event they're working, or uh, providing them with a shirt that shows off that they've, you know, helped at your school. Also, just providing a variety. I think I said this earlier, but just a variety of um, opportunities for them to uh, participate. Um, so that they can maybe even do things during the school day that you might not be thinking about that's kind of less event-based. So step five uses some strategies to engage these families um, with Parents for Healthy Kids tools and resources. We uh, started the Parent Leadership Series, uh, and this kind of goes over how sy school systems work so that parents can really understand schools better, project planning, uh, wellness policies, um, and some of the most effective ways to kind of help advocate for change, along with some project ideas and help them um, with the school food and physical activity culture. There's some presentations and webinars for there, um, in there for them to view, and just a really great, great resource for them to uh, tap if you need them to kind of um, get involved in that perspective and get the word out that way. So there's a lot of how to involve um, community organizations in Step 5 as well. Um, and one of those things that um, can help with that is hosting events on the Action for Healthy Kids events and volunteer management tool. And this is found within the school portal. Um, it can be a great tool to kind of help your school health team keep your volunteers organized. Um, it kind of takes less work from you guys and keeping it all written down and who's going to volunteer when and where. So if you need kind of a tool to help keep you organized, I, I encourage you to check that out. And last but not least in Step 5, we talk through Every Kid Healthy Week. So this is a really great place to start. If you don't have anything going on, um, but you want to get started with something, this would be just kind of a great way to start um, doing something um, to kick off your wellness initiative. So it, uh, Every Kid Healthy Week is our national annual celebration of schools' wellness achievements across the nation. And the goal of Every Kid Healthy Week is to create a national movement around school wellness. It takes place the last week of April of each year and is a great way to build awareness around the need for healthy schools. So um, this is something that we have gotten approved in the um, National Health Observance Calendar and we're, we're very proud and excited to say that last year we had over um, 1,200 schools host Every Kid Healthy Weeks. Um, and that includes about, and we know it's more than 500,000 total participants um, in those um, events. So we're really, really excited to build upon the success that we've had in the past years of Every Kid Healthy Week. So, it, and a lot of times it doesn't need to be something new that your school is doing. In the spring, I know a lot of schools do fun runs and field days and uh, taste tests and special family nights. So this really is a great way to just kind of jump on board and, and participate with us and help share that movement of school wellness. So we encourage you to, to participate with us if you're available. And the website is there on how to register your event and go to Every Kid Healthy Week um, under Step 5. Heidi? All righty. Thanks, guys. we got one more step to cover. Um, so we're going to run through it. This final step is called Receive Recognition. So in an ideal world, at this point, we're nearing the end of the school year. We've gathered a team. We've done our assessment. We've created our action plan. We picked activities and set forth, put in our action plan to implement it. We engaged our families and community. And now we have uh, this wonderful, healthy environment that we've created and we're ready to receive recognition. So within step six of Action for Healthy Kids is Game On program, uh, we promote the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms Initiative. So this is uh, one of a handful of national recognition programs. Uh, it was established in 2004 to recognize schools that were excelling in nutrition and physical activity. It's consistent with school meal pattern requirements, so schools that are already implementing some of those federal new st standards are already doing one thing to get themselves recognized through the Healthier U.S. School Challenge. The certification lasts for four years, so schools that receive the award commit to meeting that criteria during the certification period. Uh, there are various award levels, ranging from bronze all the way up to gold award of distinction, and there's a dollar amount for each award level. So this is a nice kind of extra incentive for schools that are already doing such great work. Applying through the Healthier U.S. School Challenge gets you a little bit more uh, funding to support your school wellness initiatives the following year. A couple of benefits of becoming recognized, um, it really helps with sustainability of your initiative. 
by getting that kind of healthy school approval and recognition award uh, helps to get others on board with uh, your health and wellness initiatives and really kind of enhances your ability to continue doing that. It builds school spirit, it's positive PR, which is wonderful, especially if maybe you're not always getting positive PR around other areas. Um, it increases support and momentum around school wellness initiatives. It, of course, supports the learning connection. It demonstrates to the community that your school is healthy. You understand the connection between healthy students and, and them being better learners. Um, and then, of course, on a health end, you're really leading the nation uh, in, in the efforts to end childhood obesity. So a bunch of uh, benefits to becoming recognized. Of course, there's also funding associated with it, and that's always a benefit. Um, but again, our staff, our state coordinators are trained in the Health Area School Challenge, and they're happy to support your school if you're interested in pursuing it. How can Game On Step 6 help? Uh, this is probably uh, one of the most content-heavy steps in a good way. Um, within the Step 6, you'll find tons of resources to help your school apply. We have a sample application that you can modify for your own school. We've got tip sheets and webinars for every criteria of the application to kind of help you navigate through what is required for nutrition education? Is my school meeting it? What's required for physical education? Is my school meeting it, et cetera? Um, we've got some checklists, so if you're not quite sure if you're ready to apply yet, we have a few checklists that you can complete now, see if you're ready, and if you're not ready, you can easily identify a couple of areas where you can focus over the next several months. And then there's also some nice resources for how you can divide and conquer the work. The application is, um, it's a little bit intimidating if it's the first time you're looking at it. And so what we've done is we try to create resources to make it less intimidating, make you feel supported, uh, and give you what you need to be able to, to, to divide the work among your school health team to get it done. Uh, so again, I encourage you to uh, take a look at some of these resources, do one of those checklists in the coming months, see where your school matches up, and then uh, contact us for support. So I wanna see, this is our final poll. Uh, does any, is anyone on the call nationally recognized? So the question is, is your school nationally recognized? Um, you might not know, and unfortunately, because we only have five responses, that's not an option. So just select the one that's most closely uh, related to what you think is the correct answer for you. Um, so yes, you're recognized. No, you're recognized before, but our award expired. No, but you're interested in becoming recognized. No, you're interested in learning more. Or no, you're just not interested at this time. If you can select a response, keep it open for about 10 more seconds. All righty, we'll go ahead and close that out. Okay, it looks like half of you, 50%, are interested in learning more. Um, only about 10% are currently recognized, and then the rest of you are kind of split between uh, the other responses. So, uh, great. Well, for those of you who are not recognized, uh, again, I encourage you to approve. Uh, to pursue it this year if your school is ready and let us know how we can support you. So before we wrap up today, I just wanted to highlight a couple of additional resources. We've talked about our state coordinators a lot. There's the link to contact them if you're not already connected with your state coordinator. Um, even if you don't have a specific question, I encourage you to shoot them an email, introduce yourself. Uh, they can kind of keep you in the loop on additions to Game On, on when our grants open, uh, make sure that you are, are getting connected with what's happening in your state and they're supporting you on, on an ongoing basis. We also have monthly webinars, as I mentioned earlier, so I encourage you to check out those webinars, sign up for the ones that um, best meet your needs. And then our school grants for Healthy Kids program, our applications will open in February. I know that's a long way away from now, but something to think about as you plan your school health initiatives. We have Game On grants, which are given to schools to support nutrition and physical activity grants and uh, help your school kind of navigate through the game on process. So I encourage you to check that out, to bookmark that page, and that way you can get information about that when those open. Of course, our uh, social media pages, lots of great ideas here to support your eat better and move more activities. So I encourage you to follow us uh, if you're on social media. Hannah, before we wrap up for the day, are there any questions, burning questions we can answer? They are not, Heidi. I don't see any. All righty. I guess we did our job then. Uh, if you have questions after the fact, please send them to Game On. And thanks all for your time. I know it's precious and we appreciate you and all the work you're doing. Again, we'll send the follow-up email on Friday. It'll also include registration links for future webinars if you're interested. Um, good luck with your school health work. Let us know how we can support you. And thanks again for all the work that you do. Have a great day, guys.